Welcome to part two. Now, I just want to point out something very quickly before we proceed to my bombshell. There's a lot of confusion over this uh, sugar importation, this sugar manenos. In fact, in some cases, it's getting boring. Yeah. However, in my latest Club 1999 recording, yeah, I give out some very sensitive information that will open your eyes to exactly what is happening here. And it explains exactly why CS Finance, Henry Rotich, opened the floodgates for the importation of sugar, yeah, which led to the mess the country is currently facing. I can assure you it was not an accident. I can assure you it was not, a, it was not him messing up. It was very deliberate, and it was done with a reason. And it has nothing to do with CS uh, Henry Rotich, believe it or not. Okay? If you're not already a member, just use the email address you see on your screens right now. You'll get an automated response on exactly what you need to do to become a member. Yeah, it's very easy. A uh, lifetime membership costs $2,999 or $29.99. Okay. And uh, six months membership costs uh, 199 shillings, 1999 Kenya shillings. That's why the club is called 1999. Yeah. Or uh, $19.99. Okay. So just use the email address, you'll get an automated response with full instructions on exactly what you need to do, okay? Because you really need to catch that recording. I highly recommend it because it explains a lot of things. In fact, uh, some people would think this sugar thing started yesterday, but this thing explains in detail exactly where and why this thing started and the kind of uh, crazy, crazy profits being made from these uh, dirty corrupt deals, yeah? Make sure you don't miss it. Now on to the bombshell. Now, I need to ask you a question. Is this the first time that we're having manenos between the president and his principal deputy? Or if I can ask the question another way, is this the first time that uh, we are seeing the president having to deal with somebody who is perceived to be a threat to his presidency? The answer is no way. It has happened many times before. Now, if we are to follow president, because president is very important, it helps us understand what is going to happen next. It helps us understand what is going to happen now. Yeah, we just need to carefully look at what has happened in the past. Now, looking at what has happened in the past, the next, the next uh, logical step, can you guess what it is? The next logical step, based on what has happened in the past, is for that threat or that uh, principal deputy to the president to be removed, to be removed from the position of power. Now, according to our constitution, the president cannot fire his deputy. Even a governor cannot fire their deputy. But there are other ways of uh, removing a deputy. For instance, and I'm just giving a hypothetical example, if that deputy is found guilty of an offense, criminal offense, there is no way they can hold their office while in prison. No way. Yeah, so that's one of the ways of removing them. The other method is that you can force them into resigning. That is, you can create a situation, you can create an environment where they have no other option but to resign their position. However, to do that, you have to reduce their clout. You have to reduce their power, their political power. There are many ways of doing this. One of them is to buy uh, their supporters, yeah, their mem the members of parliament who are on their side, get them to cross the floor and support you instead of uh, <laughs> the deputy president. Now, make no mistake about it. The government is very powerful. State machinery, <laughs> there's very little state machinery cannot do. Now, even without using money, there's one very effective way of uh, getting support to your side. Just compile a prosecution file yeah, full of evidence that is incriminating against the person you want to cross over. And then the dark forces, yeah, because these people are normally given these deals behind uh, very dark corners and behind closed doors, behind the scenes, very far away from the press or the public. Yeah, the dark forces behind the scenes tell them, okay, this is your file. This is what we have. Uh, we are about to hand it over to the Director of Public Prosecutions. However, uh, 
there's a way we can stop uh, all this there's a way this file can disappear there's a way no further action can be taken on this file all you have to do is to do one two three four now when you add this information to the information i gave you earlier on about politics being a game of betrayal this makes absolute sense and the likelihood of this is very high so the dark forces conclude by telling uh, the victim <laughs> if i can call them that now what you need to do is you need to call a press conference and announce this and make sure you really lash out at that guy yeah the, you know reveal this secret about him reveal that you know just just uh, make sure after that press conference we are all clear which side you're on okay and so the dark forces even organize the press conference for you yeah and then uh, as you come to the press conference and you're hesitating uh, that contact the contact person or your handler <laughs> is seated at the back of the room and is holding this huge file so every time every time he sees you hesitate every time he sees you having second thoughts or every time he sees you trying to start saying words uh, which are different from what you agreed on he just waves the file quietly <laughs> so you're seated at the front this guy is right behind the room behind even the press nobody is seeing him he's at a kakona somewhere so every time you say the wrong thing he lifts up the file and just waves it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that's kenyan politics for you now there's something else that is also bound to happen and this is the real bombshell i have uh, looked at uh, what's happening in the country i have talked to one or two inside sources yeah I tried to get some inside information on what's going on behind the scenes yeah what i've been looking for are telltale signs yeah that this thing is about to happen now to be very honest with you i did not find those telltale signs yeah at least not yet okay but even then i am still convinced that we are about to see a major cabinet reshuffle the idea of this cabinet reshuffle yeah is to remove the clout of the deputy president the clout he has been building up since 2013 so this is what's going to happen okay some people are going to the the file waving if you can call it that the file waving method is going to be used some people are just going to be removed from office and there's a third option some people are going to be removed from office and the file is going to be waived both of them yeah both methods are going to be used on them now the really interesting part in all this drama if it happens is that uh, the new appointees to replace those who will be removed will have to be approved by parliament there will be drama but in my view the state still has the edge still has the advantage where do they have the advantage they have the advantage because this time yeah on the floor of the house they'll have the full backing of the orange democratic movement and that is why that is precisely why it will make a lot of sense for these new appointees to be members of the orange democratic movement now i can hear some people saying oh you know uh, our democracy does not allow that the president cannot appoint people from the opposition blah 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 hold your horses technically speaking we don't have an opposition in kenya yeah our system is such that there's no opposition what we have is a majority and a minority yeah and both are presented represented by a majority leader and a minority leader this is the american system so it's absolutely in order for the president to appoint anybody he feels like even people from the orange democratic movement so if this pans out it is very possible we could be in a situation whereby the deputy president is still very much in office yeah however there's been a reshuffle and this reshuffle very dramatically increases the power of a man called Raila Amolo Odinga and also the power of another man called Gideon Moi both are enemies of dp william ruto and that is politics now i must add a disclaimer 
Yeah, cabinet reshuffles are very, very tricky things to predict based on my experience. At least twice before in the history of Kenya, yeah, I've been aware of situations whereby the list has been ready, everything has been finalized, and then at the last minute, the president opts not to go for it. It has happened at least twice. Once during uh, President Daniel Toretisha Rap Moy's administration, and the other time under Moy Kibaki. And that's the reason why I'm usually very hesitant to predict cabinet reshuffles. There is always the likelihood that all the signs will be there, the, the, the list has been finalized, everything has been finalized. In some cases, even the new appointees have already been talked to. And then something happens, a new development, the, pre the president changes their mind. In case you didn't know, presidents are allowed to change their minds. <laughs> so take my prediction with a lot of maturity. Yeah, anything can happen. It is not cast in stone. Yeah, indeed our politics at the moment is very fluid. Anything can happen. Yeah, that will completely scuttle and dismiss any possible cabinet reshuffle. And even I've already told you that I've looked for the telltale signs and I still don't see them. Yeah. However, my gut feeling tells me this reshuffle is coming. And believe me, I've really hesitated yeah, telling this to you. However, my gut feeling tells me, tell them. yeah. And that's why I've given you, you know, I've talked about it very logically. I've given you the background. I've given you the reason. I've given you the motives, etc., etc. So let us just wait and see what happens. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.